last time on The Sinking City. See you later, Colonel Mustard. Goodbye, you human escape room. This guy looks like a freaking wizard. This mounty looking dude. What the hell were you doing? Careful, dude, you're gonna get the bends. You ate leeches. Hey guys, it's John, and welcome back to The Sinking City. We just solved another case, and I think now we have to go report it to Throgmorton. I can't think of what else we have to do at the moment, so let's just go ahead and get that underway. The sun is rising. People are on their way to work. Where does everyone around here work? Had a wild Friday night, huh? You all right, buddy? I don't really give a shit. Now, something that's been bothering me. Back at this expedition headquarters, it said all key evidence was collected. But it didn't say all evidence was collected. So I'm a little annoyed about that. What did I miss? Map of Cape Cod. It looks like there was something here, but it's been erased. Okay. All evidence- that was it?! I didn't look at the map?! Oh, pardon me. Well, we got all evidence collected now, so now we can leave. Stop hitting yourself, dude. That's literally you, Freddy Krueger. Fighting over a piece of scrap that you just threw away? Oh. You guys are having the worst fight I've ever seen. And you both have the exact same backpack. What's with the doll? What do you need that for? I'm leaving you guys to your own devices. I got better things to do. I got bigger fish to fry. They're fishmen. Let's see. Okay, so this is the Throg Morton estate right here. We gotta go report to Robert what we've seen. Something tells me he's gonna be less than thrilled about saving the people in that cavern. But we'll talk him into it. Wow. Big man. Big gun. We're all impressed. Hi. Your expedition needs help. I've got news, Mr. Throgmorton. The expedition members are alive. They're on the seabed in the sunken ruins. Some sort of ancient temple. They have enough air, but we need to hurry. What happened? Why didn't the sailors help them? Uh, Sanders left them? There was mutiny on Titania. Captain Sanders abandoned them. Sailed away from the dive point. The fear, the... the visions, they got to him. Sanders. I'll see that he doesn't have long to regret his cowardice. Uh-oh. I'm afraid that's not all. I Ian's mouthers took the expedition's discoveries and kidnapped the professor. What? Those degenerates. How did that happen? Uh, the Inns mouthers knew about the ruins. They wanted to kidnap Professor Doe. Uh, well, didn't we just say that that happened? Okay, keep up, John. Let's go. The Innsmouthers, they knew about the temple. They waited there, hiding until the professor took what the Innsmouthers call the seal. But how did they manage to catch my scientists off guard? It seems that after the seal was taken from its place, everyone in the expedition suffered some kind of mental breakdown. The Innsmouthers must have known about that, waited for the right moment. Then they made off with Professor Doe and the artifact. Drock! The Innsmouths! Do you have proof they were involved? One of the attackers was killed by a member of the expedition. I have a photo. My expedition failed. My boy was killed. This is more than personal, Mr. Reed. This is a threat to everyone. Okay. They have That's Harriet a bit of a stretch. and the artifact she found, but she may still be alive. That's why I hesitate to wipe their fish-faced kin from Oakmont this instant. But we won't sit idle. Find them, Mr. Reed. Not the grunts, but their leaders. Infiltrate their ranks if need be. Bring me my professor back. Okay, how is this connected to my investigation? What do I get out of this? Yeah, let's talk about me, okay? Enough about you, ape face. I'm looking into the madness, not politics and power games. And your best source of information is currently in the slimy hands of those Innsmouthers. That's true. Professor Doe shared the visions. 
She found something inside those ruins, and now they have her. She knows something crucial, I'm certain. There's also a more delicate matter I wanted to discuss with you, Mr. Reed. I can be delicate when it matters, so shoot. I have a... a colleague, you might say. His name is Herbert Glover. Like myself, he is a uh, collector of fine art. Oh, I'm so a he's detective, a nerd. Mr. Throgmorton, not a burglar. I don't care for your insinuation, Mr. Reed. I would never be so crass as to hire a thief. I had a meeting arranged with Herbert. One of uh, great importance, shall we say. One at which he failed to appear. I want you to find out why. <laughs> I'm in. That sounds simple enough. Okay, I'll do it. Very good, Mr. Reed. There is one final detail. This case must remain secret, and you must not reveal to anyone for whom you are working. Discretion is my watchword. Indeed. Here is Herbert's address and an advance for your investigation. You'll find it's fair. I will? How much is it? Bye. Have a good day. Millions? I'm sorry, seven bullets? Yes, I find it's fair. I thought you were gonna give me like a hundred bullets or something. You'll find it's fair. That's like a million dollar insinuation right there. And you give me seven bullets? You must think I'm just dirt poor, huh? I got tons of bullets. What's this? Albert Throgmorton obituary. In loving memory, Albert Throgmorton, son of respected Robert Throgmorton, and descendant of a robust bloodline, died on Thursday at Oakmont Port, aged 25 years. We mourn his untimely death, but we celebrate the way he lived his life. The Throgmorton family appreciates the many comforting words and prayers sent by the citizens of Oakmont. I really doubt they're sending you all that hopes and prayers. I don't think they like it as much as you might think they do. You got a pool table down here? It's not being used, I see. Looks like you guys don't have a whole lot of time for partying. Did I just refer to playing pool as partying? Okay. Maybe I need to get out more. I'm gonna go up here if that's okay with you. Don't shoot me. I do just kind of want to rob you a little bit. Seems like you have a lot. The door won't budge. There it is. Jack Walters, alive in 2019. It won't budge. Okay, there's actually nothing I can interact with, which is probably the main complaint I have about the game so far is that there's just, there's not a whole lot of interaction. There's, there's a lot of uh, sights and sounds and that's good enough, but I like to be able to interact with more of the environment. Everything looks real nice. I just want to be able to play around with it a little more. Okay. Fast travel point, and here is the phone booth. Good, good, good. Herbert Glover lives on Gold Bridge Road in Central Old Grove. His house is situated between Wind Half and Century Avenue. Oh my god. Can you just tell me where it is? Oh, okay. I guess it's like right there. That's actually... Alright, that wasn't that bad. So this is a little more upscale, Old Grove. Not quite as fishing port. More like Capitol Hill type of thing. I like it. Where are all you people going? I want to just follow one of them and see where they go. I have a feeling at some point they'll probably disappear, like that guy that we helped earlier. What? Oh! Oh, it's this one! Oh no! <laughs> Anyone else? I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyone else? Come on! Oh my god. Okay. Maybe not so many of you guys. Maybe I shouldn't shoot all of them. It's not going like to give me any resources back. It's not like Resident Evil 4, where they happened to eat some bullets earlier that day, and I get some of them back. 
Okay, whatever. Not a big deal. Let's reload. I feel like a badass right now. Okay, so Herbert's a pretentious asshole. Any reason why you did that? <laughs> the door won't budge. Huh. That's an odd phonograph. Okay, we gotta find that guy's head, I think. Letter to Mr. Throgmorton. Mr. Throgmorton, it is with the deepest regret that I must inform you that the price for the piece you have requested has changed once again. The demand for it has increased, and now it is triple what we agreed earlier. I know this is the second time that I have raised the price, but the extreme circumstances of the flood make each piece almost invaluable to me, as I cannot replenish my collection. Herbert. Whiny loser. Noted. Anything else in here? Hmm. Hmm. Someone was here. And recently. <sighs> the door won't budge. Do we go upstairs? Where were these things coming from? The basement? You got a pool table down here too. Okay, I found some more shell casings. Nice, nice. Uh, you guys are obsessed with pool down here. Found two, three, eight pistol rounds. It's almost equal to what I got paid by Mr. Throngmore. <laughs> Gunpowder. Okay. Well, what's this? That's ah, the head. What did I say? Statue's head. We're gonna use this for the puzzle upstairs. Okay, let's go back up. Were they making wine down here? Look at all the kegs. I can't look at those barrels anymore without thinking about a recent Brooklyn Nine-Nine episode. <laughs> where Captain Holt's talking about the barrels. Oh boy, let's take this. What is it? What's that? Looks like a mirror? Picture of a mirror. Oh, who's good? Looks like they're short of full set. One of the mirrors was taken. Is that the piece he was talking about? Cause look, here's his collection that cannot be replenished. <gasps> we stumbled upon a dead body, guys. Eyes still wide open. Guess he didn't see the killing blow coming. Is that Herbert? He was stabbed with a knife, huh? I need some Danganronpa investigation music right now. Preferably the one from the second game. You don't have any sheets on your bed? You got this big ol' house? No sheets? You're focusing on the wrong things, my friend. What, what, are you studying a skeleton? Ooh. Maybe Mr. Throgmorton was requesting some human remains. Uh, only slight scratches around the keyhole. Whoever broke in knew how to pick a lock. Yeah, I mean, that's, this seems like a lot of scratches. Are these bullet holes? Huh. That's a lot of warning shots. Odd. Maybe those came from Herbert, though. Because he was stabbed, right? Why would he be stabbed if the person, if his assailer had a gun? Yeah. You like what Herb. you see, buddy? Okay, that was a weird thing to say. We're gonna ignore that for now. Alright, we gotta reconstruct the scene. I think I know what happened. Squint, run! Oh, okay. I have killed him. Okay, he wasn't meant to die. Squint, huh? Is that squint? Hmm. What's Easiest this? gig at this district. You grab the mirror. I'm gonna go see what other loot we can take from Mr. Moneybags here. Hmm, Irish fella. Who are you? What in case name are you doing in my house? Okay, let's see what we have here. So yeah, that's uh, Mr. Who are Mr. You? Herbert. He was what the one who case shot name it. Are you doing in my Just house? like I said. Okay, and then uh, he got shot, and Squint. then they took the mirror. Easiest gig in this district. You grab the mirror. I'm gonna go see what other loot we can take from Mr. Moneybags here. Okay, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Easiest I misunderstood. He goes in here. Grab the he gets shot Ooh. at, and then they stab what him. K's name or Squint, run. That's what they do. Oh, okay. I have killed so him. So Squint's the other guy. Two men broke in to steal a mirror. 
one of them, Squint, cracked the safe. But Glover discovered him and shot him. Second one killed Glover. Oh, okay. All right. So I guess we've solved the case, correct? Let's take a look at the case book. So this is the delicate matter, right? Wait, no, I gotta look something up with this. It's got the icon. Squint mentioned that this is not his first robbery in the district of Old Grove. Okay, so maybe we go to the police headquarters. See if we can find other crimes. Other robberies by Squint. Old Gollum Restaurant. I'll grab a bite. Why not? This place has five star reviews on Yelp. They say it's got a friendly atmosphere. Absent wait staff. Uh, excuse me, I'd like to buy some food. Man, it's a wonder that this place stays in business. What? Uh, hello, your basement's flooded. Hmm. Maybe we should get out of here, actually. What is with these people on pool tables? The balls aren't even numbered. How do you play this? How do you play this version of pool? And why do you have these? Do you have to imprison people here for them to eat at your establishment? How much did you pay those Yelp reviewers? Let's get out of here. All right, if my hunch is correct, we're gonna go for property crimes, would it be? Let's see. And it would be uh, subject suspects, uh, Old Grove. Let's go ahead and take a look, there he is. Philip O'Connell, alias Squint, residence unknown. Oh, well that's very helpful. Crimes, numerous burglaries in Old Grove, breaking and entering tax evasion. You folks pay taxes here? Possible associates, Sydney Stokes. So that's the shooter right there. Residence, Oakmont, Massachusetts, Northern Salvation Harbor, west of the intersection of Moreland Road and Salvation Road. Crimes, jaywalking, lollygagging, jury duty dodging. I see. So, that poor guy, he's the one that shot him, though. Nothing like a peaceful, foggy night to loudly motorboat through the streets, am I right? Not even the fun kind of motorboating, either. I think I'm going the correct way. It's just due west. So this actually isn't too far out of the way if I just take the waterways. It seems that a good deal of the center of the map is completely underwater. Do I hop off there? No, 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 I, I, I keep going. Let's race this barge right here. I bet we can beat him. Oh, look at these slow pokes. We're Toad and you're Bowser. You know what I'm saying? We got the mushrooms. Can I get off here? All right. We've arrived in uh, Salvation Harbor, or rather the border between Salvation Harbor and the next area. Look at that big ass crane. So this is about where he lives, if I'm not mistaken. Cause this is Moreland Road and Salvation Road, so. He's got to live somewhere around here. West of the intersection of Moreland Road and the Salvation Road. So if I just continue this way, I'll find it. Is it this? It is. Residents of Sydney Stokes, is he murdered too? How far does the rabbit hole go? What the hell? Okay, he has to be, he has to be dead. Get out of my way. Oh my god. Okay, we gotta pull the revolver out. Nothing up here, right? 
Okay, the revolver is much more powerful. Did I get him? Okay, we gotta... Oof! I got a brick, that's not what I want. Let's see, I can craft... Two of these things. I need to find more alcohol. Either that or I need to take more naps. This is unacceptable. Okay, let's get the gun back out. You fellas, what were you doing here? You just kind of appeared out of the floorboards. Mr. Sidney Stokes is without a doubt dead. If he's got these things crawling around his house. And bones on his plate! The Sydney, I know times are tough. But first you resort to your life of crime and now this? Letter from the morgue, Mr. Stokes. The price for a separate burial for your mother, Martha Stokes, is 30 bullets. The morgue cannot give you a discount. There are more requests for burials than we have resources or manpower to satisfy. You must make the payment in two weeks or we will have to inter your mother in a mass grave. No wonder he turned to a life of crime. Uh, I'm happy to say I've never been hungry enough to consider eating whatever this is. This is the thing that we saw when I first got here and I was like, what is that? It's a cat combined with like a... Really? Oh. Okay, we did it. Sorry. That's his mother. Oops. Rest in peace. Uh, spare me, dude. He only had three bullets. He was saving up. He, it was a fund for his mother's funeral. Poor guy. Buddy. Stokes. Come on out. I won't turn you in. I just want to know what happened. We'll make Squint take the fall. Know where he is? No! He was stabbed too! It's like Squint was having a bad day. Oh no, this is Squint. I'm getting a shot just to be stabbed to death. But who did it? What was Squint doing in Sydney's house? Take a look at the knife. Does it have those weird eyes on it? At long last, I'll fix what that old ape lover Francis did to you. What? And a third party enters the story. Wait. Open up the secret area. Oh, get away from the... Oh, thank the gods. I thought you were another monster. Sidney Stokes. Sidney Stokes, I presume. I, I, that's the right, right. Do I, do I know you? Don't think so. I'm here about Herbert Glover. I believe you know him, or should I say, knew him. Uh, okay. How'd you get in here? Nice trick with the wall. How'd you manage it? It wasn't me. She put the wall there with some kind of hocus pocus. Who? You said she put the wall is here. Is it Francis Stowe? Who is she? She, she, she's our employer. I don't know her name or anything. She she promised us a good payout for a simple job. And I fell for it like a chump. Describe Come her. on, paint me a picture. What did this woman look like? She was tall and thin, very thin, just skin and bones. Mean like a rattlesnake. That's all I can remember. I I didn't look too close at her. Where is the mirror, Stokes? So where's this fancy mirror now? She took it? Yeah. When me and Phil met her with the goods, Correct. they got into a big blowout and she shifted him. Hey, what am I to do now? Phil was the idea guy. I, I was... I'm just a sap. What did she hire you to do? Uh, the job seemed simple enough. Go to the collector's house, grab some fancy mirror, and then hoof it out of there. Were you hired to kill the Collector, too? No, it was or an accident. was that just for laughs? I, I, I swear to Kay, I, it wasn't part of the plan. It was an accident. The guy started shooting at us, and I panicked. You panicked? Really? That's your excuse? Oh, please, as Kay is my witness, I didn't mean to kill anyone. I'll give you everything I have. Just, just let me walk. I'm not gonna accept the bribe. 
Man, this poor guy. I'm gonna get on Throgmorton's bad side. Ooh, I'm skating on thin ice! Look, you might be a sap, but at least you're an honest sap. I'll look the other way, but you better get scarce and fast. Oh, thank you. You're a lifesaver. Uh, you won't see me again, I swear. H here, take this. Thanks again. You gave me two first aid kits. I got some key evidence. All right. What is this? Oh. Oh, Ma. I killed him. What have I done? What in the world have I done? Hmm. Well, I, I'm glad that it's not a piece of evidence that would have changed my mind or anything. By the way, buddy, uh, you know what's going on here? <laughs> you know, you got wild beasts downstairs, right? Ugh. What am I gonna say to Throgmorton, though? We found something about the woman who took the mirror, which I'm sure will come into play later. We probably have to talk to Throgmorton about that. Oh, I forgot I even had the statue's head. Oh, oops. Maybe I can fast travel over there and use it. Buy a paper, mister? Yes, let me have one. I wanna read the newspaper. So this is what I mean. I wanna be able to buy the newspaper from that guy. Oh well. Alright, so it was this house over here, right? Let's put the statue's head in and see what we get. Better be something good. Okay, that's a weird... Sure. This opens up now. I got two bullets, and that's about it. Cool. That's it. That's all, that's all it was. I finished the investigation. I've looked into your delicate matter. Excellent. Don't spare me any details. Glover's dead. He was killed by a man named Sidney Stokes who happened to be robbing his place. And he wasn't working alone. He had a partner, Phil O'Connell. Didn't end up much better. All over uh, some kind of mirror, apparently. Truck. Where is a mirror now? Their employer has it. Uh, some mystery woman. I didn't get her name, but she obviously wasn't fooling around. I see. So, my enigmatic competitor has finally shown her hand. And the thieves are both dead, you say? Both of them are dead. Their employer decided to bump them off. Now, I hope that's not standard business practice in these parts. You've proven to be far more valuable to me alive than dead, Mr. Reed. You have nothing to worry about in that regard. Hmm. Could have told me. <laughs> Could have told. Could have told you what? About reward. All right. I've held up my end of the bargain. Now, it's your turn. Of course, Mr. Reed. Here's your payment. Now that you know everything. Would you accept the second part of the job? Mm? I guess. You want me to track down the mirror? Yes. And the one who so rudely snatched it from my grasp. Sure. I'm on it. Only got one lead, though. Our culprit had a bone to pick with someone named Francis. Mean anything to you? Ah, uh, yes. That is without doubt my father, Francis Throgmorton. Okay, rest his soul. Hmm, how's he involved? What's he got to do with this? I found mention of the mirror in his records. That's what led me to take interest. Did he have enemies? Apparently he did. Come on, man. Keep up. About those records. You mentioned your father left records. Mind if I take a gander at them? The prospect of you rifling through my father's possessions does not fill me with joy, Mr. Reed. But if that's what you need, so be it. <sighs> Take this key. Thank you. And I got five 12 gauge shells. What? Is that for a shotgun? I'm sorry. Is there a shotgun in this game? Can I wield a shotgun? Can I point at people's faces and threaten them with it? That's all I want out of life. Okay. 
Let's take a look at this. Through the looking glass. Oh, I gotta go back inside and use the key. Oops. Okay, don't shoot me. Can I have a shotgun? Okay, it must be this study right here. Let me in. Awesome. Seems an ambitious expedition. Huh? Like father, like son. Ah, oh, we could kind of see into it a little bit from the foyer. Huh, curious craftsmanship. These must be worth a fortune. That's why they're behind glass, dude, yeah. Hmm. 1891 must have been a busy year for Francis. What the hell? Exclusive interview! We gotta go to the newspaper. Look up the interview. Francis Throgmorton's expedition to Africa has proven to be one of the most ambitious, if sadly unappreciated, undertakings of 1891. He has returned with numerous historical artifacts and valuable anthropological research, a newborn son, christened Robert, and a plethora of fascinating cultural insights. Wow, he's just living the life, isn't he? Today, in an exclusive interview with the Oakmont Chronicle, he has agreed to share some of these insights with us. What? We gotta go check out that interview. What's going on here? Okay, okay. Private correspondence, 12-12-1894. Francis, divorce is no simple matter these days. It never has been in my legal practice. You must clearly define the fault you shall present to the court. The most common options being cruelty, adultery, or an incurable mental illness. It is my impression that your firstborn's death at the tender age of seven dealt a blow to Bethany's health. Bethany is the old woman. Did Francis? No. No, he didn't. I do sincerely hope she recovers, but the court won't share my concerns. Besides, Oakmont Asylum seems to be a very well-run place. Regards, Chauncey. Maybe not then. I'm just saying, did he leave his wife for Rosie over here? I mean, she's quite the looker. It would explain a couple things. <clears throat> like a certain ape man downstairs. He acted like it was part of his lineage dating back centuries, so maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit there. All right, so we've got we've got a couple leads. We can go to the Oakmont Asylum and look for Bethany. All right, it's gotta be this way a little bit. Charlie, man, we've gone through a couple different night cycles now, and you have not slept a wink. You need to get some shut eye, buddy. Then again, I have a hunch from the fact that our little motorboat is called the Cyclops 2 that this may not be too real, what we're experiencing. Oh, looking at a beaker. Just like the doctor. I'm looking for Bethany Throgmorton. You got any patients by that name? We'd know if we had a Throgmorton. Although, we do have a Bethany. Or rather, we did. She's missing, and not on one of her usual walks. You mean she broke out? Yes, knocked an orderly out cold. What? She was out the door in a moment. It took us all by surprise. She's usually harmless. You're talking about a shriveled old woman, right? Knocked out an orderly. Her usual walks. You let patients leave the building? Oh, Bethany was harmless, and she always came back. This time, well, I've never known her to be like that. Where'd she go? Any idea where she went? No. If they knew that, then... She had been... She wouldn't be missing. ...recently, though. Uh, muttering to herself, and she drew this strange picture on her bedroom wall. Is it the That's... mirror? Interesting. It, she drew a picture I'd of the take mirror. A look at her room. I suppose it couldn't hurt. She had a separate room downstairs. Here's the key, but do watch out for broken glass. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> I like how curt he is there. Bye. 
Uh, watch out for broken glass. What kind of state do you keep this asylum in? Alright. Oh, yeah. Is anyone buying this? No one thinks you're more professional for having these on the wall. The blood's almost dry. That's a shattered mirror. That's not a good sign. Key to Bethany's room. Hmm. I will find it, baby boy. I promise. Just tell me more. That's totally... Robert Throgmorton's mother. Or not his mother. His father's first wife. Huh. Was this taken at gunpoint? The firstborn died, right? So her son died. Field day defacing these. Looks like someone took a shit all over the newspaper. Oh my god, I didn't notice all the broken glass, actually. Throgmorton's in mourning. Young Hammond Throgmorton, Francis Throgmorton's firstborn, has been pronounced dead. Mortally injured in a mysterious accident during a family holiday, little Hammond could not be revived, despite his doctor's best efforts. The funeral will be held later this week, with only family and close friends attending. In this dark and tragic hour, we are trying to remain grateful for all we have, including baby Robert, shared Francis Throgmorton. As my sole remaining heir, I will do all I can to protect him. And then that's when she found out. When she saw the baby and it had an ape face, she was like, this is not my child. But then wait. But did, wait, didn't she birth it? Um, I guess I would need to see his father's face. <laughs> Bethany's note, all I do, I do for my dear Hammond. I cannot forget that. Shame on me for thinking that reprobate squit had more common sense than greed in him. He got the mirror and I do not care how he did it. But when the time came for the exchange, he wanted more. So much more, they had the gall to threaten me. So they'd find a new buyer. What's done is done. No one has the right to come between a mother and her child. She's talking about Francis, the dead child. She sees Francis. Or wait. Whatever the kid's name. Yeah. The first kid. Yeah, he's the one that she wants to see in the mirror. She sees dead people in the mirror. Okay. Francis. Francis was the father. She tore out Francis's photo. And Hammond is the son. Okay. On the mountains of truth, you can never climb in vain. But truth is scratched out. And it says, on the mountains of madness. Hmm. Does anyone else work here, by the way? Hey, you. Watch your pocket. Some patients here have wandering fingers. You're smoking inside, my friend. Records room. Here we go. This is what I need. In all chaos, there is a cosmos and all disorder, a secret order. That sounds like the words of an optimist. You see, you think it's disorder, but really, it's order. I am not what has happened to me. I am what I choose to become. It's kind of a creepy little motivational poster, isn't it? It's motivating in a strange way. There's enough dope left in here to knock out a horse. Ah! Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Stop right there. Okay, so there she runs out with the mirror. You no longer have any power over me. I have found my Hammond. He's shown me the way. What is she seeing in the mirror? In Salvation Harbor. That's where we go. Oh, I can't believe it. The answers have been there since the last century. Okay, so clearly one, one, two. You I mean, come on. Have any Why even have this? Right there. Bethany escaped the asylum after getting the mirror from Glover. The next stop looks to be a factory called Randall Glassworks. Yeah. Which I know exactly where that is. Where the hell is Randall Glassworks? I'm just gonna guess here for now. It's in Salvation Harbor, we know that. Hmm. 
I'll just have to wander over there for a while, I guess. Oh, uh, why won't it go? <laughs> why won't my car move? You gotta be in the driver's seat first, buddy. Throw up, you'll feel better. The prophecy inscribed in the twilight of the dying moon. <laughs> okay. Now that, that nonsense is over with. Oh, I suffered a big Sandy hit for that. Well, I guess I deserved it. Randall Glassworks. All right, let's keep looking around. Where are we right now? Oh, we're not in the center at all. We're not where I thought we were at all. Uh, let's go south. Okay, we got a fast travel point, Salvation Harbor West. I taste like the dreams of mad children. How did you get up that high to place that disturbing graffiti? Okay, so I'll let you guys know what I'm on now. So I'm going to City Hall, which is right here. I wish I could just click on it. Oakmont City Hall, because I cannot find this Randall Glassworks place to save my life. I've been wandering around uh, the area for minutes and I just got so impatient. So we're gonna go to the City Hall. Maybe they have some archives there. We can look up where stuff is. I'm just using my detective brain. Who knows, maybe we'll find another woman with her mouth sewn shut. Won't that be exciting? Okay. So this must be it. And we can go inside. Let's check it out. Hi, you just apparated into existence. Hello. Yes, yes, I haven't got all day. What do you want? Uh, just wanted to say hi. I'm new in town. Oh, how nice for you. If you need to look anything up in our archives, get in line like everybody else. There is no line. Get in line? I'm the only one here. Well, I guess that means I'm first then. So, I can just go look up what I need. Don't sass me, young man. Next time there could be a line here, and you'll get no special treatment. You weren't gonna give me any special treatment anyway. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Why did I even bother talking to you? Where's the archives? Here they are. Okay. Let's check out Enterprises. That's exactly what I needed. Enterprises. Uh, let's see. It was in Salvation Harbor. Randall Glassworks. She thinks the answers have been there since the last century. Okay, so let's say 19th century. There it is, Randall Glassworks. Proprietor Gaunter Randall. Whoa, whoa. -ho -ho. Gaunter Randall? So that's a double reference right there. Uh, for anyone who's played The Witcher 3, you know what reference I'm talking about. The mirror salesman, perhaps? And then Randall, Randall Flagg. Like I've referenced several times in the last video. Address Southern Salvation Harbor, Skipper Road between Eel Street and Calm Shore Street. Thank you! Let's see. Skipper Road, there's Skipper Road. Eel Street and Calm Shore Street. There's Calm Shore and Eel, so it's right there. All right, that's where we need to go. You know, why don't they just have conventional addresses? Here it is. It looks like this workbench was used for making frames. Okay. I got some gunpowder. Nice. You don't think I'm gonna run into any trouble here, do you? That fishman attack... Okay. That fishman attack in the last part kind of put me on edge. Let's go. Okay, got him. Okay, you think he's the last one? Oh, cool, a beaker. Some sort of treatment solution. It must be what they use to turn glass panes into mirrors. Should we go upstairs? Let's go downstairs first. Oh, it's all flooded down here. And I hear crackling electricity. Oop! The door there we go. Budge. What the? What the hell? Oh. 
Is he real? Dude, you couldn't see him. The door won't budge. What's in there? Come on, let me in. Okay, well there's nothing else down here. Let's go upstairs, see if we find anything cool up there. The door won't budge. A human face. Hold up, I'll unlock the door. Let me in. Oh. Hey guys. I guess you're the reason that beast in the basement went quiet. Oh. I don't know how to thank you, mister. Well, for a start, have you seen an old lady with a mirror around here? Huh. Old Bethany? Of course. She got locked in our storage downstairs when the beasts attacked. I got a spare key. Please let her out. And feel free to take any supplies you want. You saved our lives. All in a day's work. Thanks. Feels good being the hero. I got a rusty key. Oh, this used to be an okay place to live. Well, oh, world's most boring man likes sleeping on a plain mattress in a freaking glassworks place. Yeah. Do all mirror makers look this shifty? Oh, I love it. That's... Yeah, that's a Witcher 3 Easter egg right there. Hi, Gaunter. All mirror makers look this shifty. My favorite character from Witcher 3. Oh, nice work. It looks like the craftsman's gone out of business, though. Too bad. Who knew that so much planning went into mirrors? What is a planner mirror? I know it's pronounced planer. You humorless bastards. That was a joke. They hide. They hide underwater. In the pools, in the puddles. Can't be too careful. Okay, you guys are boring me. What's this? Oh, pistol rounds. Guys, come on. You got ammunition just sitting around on the ground. <laughs> Pick it up. All right, let's go to the basement. We got the rusty key, so. Trying to find out some answers once and for all. There's no one here, which I should have seen coming. Randall's diary. Never thought this city would surprise me, but Francis Throgmorton did just that. Clearing the way for his preferred heir by getting rid of the other. The man honestly believes he did his son a favor by stuffing him in the mirror ways. Didn't want to kill him, as if that's any worse than what he did. Me, I'm just happy to share what I know. Should Francis want to bring his son back, hopefully he can find the kid a new body to live in. I'm done with this wretched city. Time to move somewhere warmer. Hmm. What's this? Okay, okay. Ah, uh, that's a thick book. Thick enough to be someone's life's work. All right. Someone's been stocking up. Okay, so his house, Randall's house. Hold on, Hammond. We're almost there. Wow, I did not expect for this rabbit hole to go this deep. Do we gotta find Randall's house now? <laughs> I doubt he's still here. Let's check out the casework. Okay. These mirror ways are cold, alien, and hostile environments that warp and defy the world they reflect. Souls and minds pass through them disembodied, and should one be trapped there, they make for an agonizing, inescapable prison. To extract the trapped soul, a practitioner will need a valid repository for it, but be aware, once the soul has been extracted, its prison seldom survives. Okay, so it's got these little, like, uh, speech bubbles, right? So I'm wondering if I can ask the guys upstairs about it or not. 
I feel like they unlocked new dialogue options. I think that's what that means. I think that's happened before and I haven't taken advantage of it. So let's just check with them. Uh, okay. They hide. No. They hide. No, you guys are the worst. Here we go. Search warrant. Warrant to enter and search the premises of the Randall Glassworks Salvation Harbor to investigate recurring complaints of suspicious activity at night. Interrogate the suspect, Gaunter Randall. Okay, that's what we needed. So we need to look up some crimes, I think. This warrant had to come from somewhere. And I'm thinking it came from the police station. Because where else would it have come from? Alright, we got the search warrant. We're in the police archives. Time to find... Uh, would it be complaints? Suspects? Which has gone to Randall, and then District. That would be Salvation Harbor. There we go, Mirror Maker's house. We're coming, Gaunter. Alias Davis Miles, Mirror Maker. Age unknown. Residents fled the city, last known location, Oakmont, Northern Old Grove, the corner of Winhalf and Goldbridge. All right, so we gotta go back to Old Grove. This side quest has us running all over the place. Sheesh. All right, we're back in Old Grove. We pinned down the location of the Mirror Maker's house. And I'm heading there now. Well, kind of a roundabout way, but I know exactly where it is. I'm not expecting to find Gaunter, because he has fled the city, as it seems. But maybe we'll find more information. Is this it? This is at the corner. This is... This is at the corner of Goldbridge and Winhalf. Oh, but there's four houses at the corner of Goldbridge and Winhalf. Is it this big ass house over here? Oh, you know he would live in a place like this. Boom. Yeah, this is it, all right. And hey, wait a second. Hmm. This house looks a lot like Stokes's house. Okay, there's some, there's some beasties here. They heard that gunshot too, they're gonna come running. Are they all gonna come from downstairs? Nope, they're upstairs too. Oh, there's several, there's several. Reload, reload, reload. We're gonna have to kite this guy. Or just gun him down. We can just gun him down too, that works. <laughs> All right, uh, man, I would appreciate if we could have more than like a third of our health for like two seconds. In here a while. Letters, huh? Hmm. This telephone isn't hooked up to anything, Mister Mirror Maker. You know what? Choose another health kit. Let's bring this back. All right. Yeah, this looks a lot like Stokes' house. I think it's the same house. Eligible bachelor. Francis Throgmorton, the city's darling scholar and adventurer, is once again a most eligible bachelor. The divorce court hearing took place this Tuesday. No press were allowed in the courtroom, but the results were made public immediately after the ruling. Bethany Throgmorton's deteriorating mental health was deemed a sufficient reason to terminate the couple's marriage. There's been enough mourning, said Francis while exiting the courtroom. Our son Hammond's death was a tragedy, which you orchestrated, Francis, we know that. But we must stay strong. It's a pity Bethany could not. You had her committed. You're just like all the other Throgmortons. Man, I'm starting to become racist against the Throgmortons. Somebody's been doing their homework. Mm-hmm. First aid kit. Gimme. Glad I found that lying on the ground. His manner into a museum of vintage mirrors collected over many decades. Where are they? Are they in the basement? And the biggest mirror exhibition in the history of Oakmont, including Master Randall's finest creations. Oh! That's the guy that was killed. He was the one who took uh, all the mirrors. Let's go downstairs. Was it always flooded like this? Alright. Good down here, huh?
What, it goes down another level? Hmm. Okay. Oh, hidden wall. What? Okay. Life can be cruel. This is Hammond's body. Would have made a better father proud. That's the mirror, too. Get out of my face. It's a mirror of madness. I gotta be careful. Can't get too close to it. But I'm gonna have to if I if I can examine it. Okay. What the No, my head. Uh, damn it. I can't I can't. Okay. Look behind it? No, nah, nothing's there. Okay, okay, he's starting to th freak out a little bit. Okay, let's leave, let's leave. Gather our bearings, we'll come back in a second. Hang on. Oh! Okay, okay, okay. What we find? I won't find a miniature coffin like this. You all right? You all right? I'm a little confused. Oh. Occult Tome. A simple warding spell can be created through the application of sympathetic magic. To establish an accord that affects an entity, one must find a similar entity that has a powerful bond with the other. Oh, oh, looks like we unlocked something. We gotta string together some events. Here we go. As long as this mirror stays whole, you mm. will be safe, baby boy. Safe while I find a way to free you. I see. So that's what it was talking about in the occult tome. Uh, what other events do we need to find? Maybe one up here? Here's one. These rights. They might buy me time. So that happened before the other one, because she's reading the occult tome here, figuring out what she needs to do. Is the third one in the basement? Because that's going to be the last one. So it's going to be one, two, three. Pretty simple. Here we go. Last one. I will get you out, Hammond. There has to be a way. Time to piece this one together. Okay, so we start. We start upstairs. We work our way down. Again, pretty simple. To Here we go. You. That's the third one. I will get you out, Hammond. There has to be a way. Wow, all my trash talk. This is the first one. I will get you out, Hammond. There has to be a way. Okay. I should have just paid closer attention. So that one, then she goes and she reads the occult tome. And then she places the little mirror. These rights, they might buy me time. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got right. Bethany set up some sort of barrier to buy time while she tries to free Hammond. I could remove it by destroying her ritual mirror. Oh no, we got another choice to make. There's a barrier protecting the mirror designed to keep it safe until Bethany can find a way to free her son. She set a ritual with a hand mirror to keep up the spell. I must smash it to lift the barrier. I must smash it, eh? Okay. Is this not what you do? What about, what, okay. All right, what if you do this? Oh, that did it. <laughs> what? what? That did it. So now, are we good? Is the has the barrier oh, been lifted? No, no, you can't have him. I won't let you. You can't take the mirror. You hear me? Bethany, calm down, please. <laughs> Bethany, no harm. 
Come on. No, you, you won't take my child. Not again. I won't let you. Not again. I just want to talk. It's okay. We can talk about this. I know the mirror is important to you. It's my son. I know the mirror is important my, to you. My son. His soul, his very being trapped in the mirror. Cold, hungry, scared for decades. It's, um, okay, it's so hard to understand. His body is dead, but his soul is frozen in glass, unable to move on or return without help. Oh. Francis thought this was merciful, oh, the wretch. Man, what's your plan? What do you mean to do then? I can call Hammond back into his own body. Don't judge me. This, this may seem unnatural, but, but, but we will be together. Everything is ready. I'm sure it will work. I only need to break the mirror to release him. I can't go back empty-handed. And I won't leave without my son. Well, looks like we're at a standstill. Okay. Let's look back at the choices I've made. I've been working against Robert Frog Morton this whole way. We could take the mirror back to Robert. Get a nice payday of five bullets. Or we can say, screw him. You can keep it. But then what are we going to say? I couldn't find it. Or we're going to come back and say the mirror was smashed. That's what he's going to say. I wonder if it's ever going to draw suspicion from him, Robert that we keep coming back like, oh, I found the thing, but like it was broken slash dead, completely destroyed. <laughs> Uh, fine. You may keep it. Okay. Well, I guess you've got the right to try. Go ahead. I'll have to find some way to sweet talk Robert. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Robert's kind of clueless, so hey. Okay. We good? What? Life can be cool. Are you gonna get that? No, not this. Her. Oh, thank you so much, newcomer. You made the right choice. Let him out! Let him out! Oh my god, I can't. Can't be here for this. <laughs> okay. All right, Robert. Got bad news for you, buddy. The mirror was destroyed! I found a disturbing book, Mr. Throgmorton. He knows. He, he definitely knows. That's it why he wants the mirror. It's prison souls. Now level with me. What is it you're after? I suppose there's no point in being coy. I have learned that I once had a brother, Hammond. My father robbed me of him. Hammond is inside the mirror, trapped by sorcery. My father's doing. Why, I cannot guess. But he is a Throgmorton. He must be saved. I see. Well, he was. I had some questions about Bethany. I beg your pardon? I don't believe I know anyone of that name. Well, it came up during the investigation. See, your father divorced and his ex-wife's name was Bethany. Say no more. It is beyond my earliest memories, but even if it weren't, my father's business is his own. I shall not engage in gossip. Wow, he doesn't remember her at all. Your father led an expedition back in 1891. Do you know anything about it? I'm not the best person to ask, I'm afraid. I was a babe in arms back then, and my father never made his findings public. Well, it's a great shame, of course. Let's his put work two and two would together. Have the science of evolution on its head. Yeah, I can see that. Literally. Wait, are we not turning have the question? 
I'm not in the mood for chit chat, Mr. Reed. Huh? Did I not finish? Did I not finish? Oh my god, I pick up the shards from the mirror. Oh, oh let's go back and give it to Robert. Acting like you never seen it before. Oh, that's a pretty good sculpture right there. All right, the mirror is broken. I was too late. The mirror, I found it broken. What? No. How? How could this happen? Oh, my brother, my poor brother. I expected better from you, Mr. Reed. By gay, I did. No, oh, Drock, just go. Leave me to my ghosts. Eh, it seems like he's actually mourning. Well, okay. I still got my payment. <laughs> but like, what happens when you just shoot him, though? I highly advise you to put down your gun, Mr. Reed. Damn it. Damn it. You can't kill these guys. Ah, ah man. All right, well, uh, so we're done with that lengthy side quest. We can get on with the main case once again, quid pro quo, and I can't even remember what it was about Harriet Doe. We gotta find out what happened to her, right? I think I'll do that in the morning. It's, uh, it's 3 a.m. here, so I'm gonna go to bed, but see you guys in a second. Hi, I'm back. We're gonna check out the police station and see if we can make some headway on the main case. You are still here. Do you sleep here? In that position? You might be asleep right now. All right, so the reason I wanna to go to the police station is because here it says, uh, this can't be the only attack they have carried out, the Innsmouthers who kidnapped Professor Doe. There must be evidence of more such crimes throughout the city. So I'm assuming I have to go here and uh, check them out. Violent crimes? Subjects? Uh, let's see, instruments of crime, right? Because he had the knife with the weird eye on it. Suspects? There we go. About 10.30 p.m. April 15th at the Fish Market, Eastern Shells, corner of Orchard Avenue and Holy Fire Lane. <laughs> Holy Fire Lane. I mean, at a certain point, it just sounds kind of cheeky, doesn't it? Sounds like you don't take your religion that seriously. I apprehended a suspicious looking Innsmouther as he was stalking a young woman. The suspect had in his possession a peculiar golden amulet which resembled a fish eye, seized, as well as a dagger, seized. The suspect resisted arrest. When I tried to cuff him, he cried for help, screaming for his brothers from EOD. Order of Dagon, maybe? Esoteric Order of Dagon is what it stands for. Pretty sure. Several other armed Innsmouthers appeared from the fish market. I was forced to release said Innsmouther and retreat. The suspect got away. The case is pending for investigation, Lieutenant Phelps. Okay, so I got a police report. Do you think I need more than that, though? More than the police report. Maybe I need to go where it said, though. It's in the Eastern Shells. Oh, this is the fish market. Oh, okay. Well, then we can get rid of this. I know where to go. Because I mistakenly went there earlier when I was looking for something else. Uh-oh. I decided to take a shortcut through the infested area. Might not have been the best move. Ooh, a first aid kit. Oh, I can't carry anymore. I'm too good at this game. I already have too many of them. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. They were on our tail. They went all the way to the port. What? There's another infested area. Man, I just want to get to the fish market. Okay. Got the fast travel point. Here we are at the fish market. You can tell because it says fish right here. And I believe that that's Edo SZ typeface. If I'm not mistaken, I might be. There's a lot that can look like a paintbrush Take as much type of as you need. fun. Hi. You a penny. Fish? Fresh fish? Take as much as you need. It won't cost you a penny. Don't be shy. We have enough for everyone. I've heard that I can find an organization hereabouts that goes by the name of the EOD. Am I in the right place? You sure are. 
I happen to be a representative of the EOD. What? Pleased to meet you. My name's Anna. Can I help you with something? But you're not an insider. Charles mother. Reed. Just a few questions, if I may. <laughs> of course. Ask away, Charlie. Oh, she calls him Charlie too. Mm, she's been a little flirty. She oh, has such generosity. I hear a lot of whispering. This city is short on everything except dirt, rain, and things that want to kill you. Yet you just give away food for free. What's your angle? Angle? <laughs> There's no angle, Charlie. N not everyone can hide in fancy manners like the grand families. And our hearts tell us we must do more. We've decided to seize our own fate and rise above this disaster. I think it's going well. The sea is good to us, and it blesses us with abundance. Tell me more about the esoteric Order of Dagon. What is the EOD? I mean, what, what do you do as an organization? Well, we are a non-profit charitable organization. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's better to say that we're a gathering of volunteers. We're not an official charity yet. As for what we do, we try to help ease the suffering in our city as much as we can. Oh, how do you do that? We provide fish for the hungry and fix the homes of the poor. We also patrol the streets at night to keep the wild beasts and bandits at bay. And many, many more things. Mm, like what? Whatever needs doing. Anything to help the people, Charlie. Don't buy this, guys. Don't buy this bullshit. <laughs> Don't call me Charlie. Let's leave that for now. What are- uh, where are your superiors? Let, let's ask this. I want to see what she says. What does EOD stand for? Everyone's obvious duty. That is not what it when is! When we began, it also had is to help each other. But we dropped that part. It was a little bit wordy. Where are your superiors? Can I speak to your manager, please? It's been great chatting with you, but I'm actually here to speak with the EOD leadership. You know where I can find him? <laughs> Not so fast, Charlie. Nobody meets the top brass without being a member. You need to earn a rank in the EOD first. Oh, you're kidding me. What for? <laughs> you need to prove yourself. Show us through your actions that you're worth our time. No offense, Charlie. Okay, you're, you're really you're really wearing that thin, but I'm not gonna confront you about it just yet. How can I prove myself? How can I join? That all depends on what skills you can offer us. What do you do best? Kill people. Huh. Well, I'm afraid my resume is in my other jacket. Let me see. I was in the Navy during the war, and ever since it ended, I've been a private eye. <sighs> The sea provides. Turns out we have a job that's a perfect fit for you. What job? Okay. Tell me more about this job. Well, last night someone tried to break into our fish storage room. Luckily, the guards scared him off, but I fear they'll be back to finish the job. That's why we've been busy today giving away all the fish to the people. We'd rather it get into the hands of the needy than to some thief. And you want me to find whoever this thief is, right? <laughs> You're smart, Charlie. I like it. Exactly. You are being so flirty! Fine. Do not trust Count this woman. In. Good. Thank you. Here's the address. Tell the guard the password, I serve the sea, Ooh. and he'll let you into the storeroom. I serve the sea, come on! Red flags everywhere! Charlie! See you later. She's ruined the nickname for me. I like to call on him Charlie. Let's look at our mind palace. Oh, come on, it's starving. EOD is giving away fish. Oh, cool. The EOD helps prevent famine. Without the fish provided by the EOD, the sea is at risk of famine. Wait a second, you think they're giving away fish? You think they're infected fish? They're turning people into insmallers. They're blessing people with the sea, I bet. I bet that's what's going on. Okay. Uh, okay, I gotta find this. Western Shells, great. On Hawking Lane between Warren and Liberty. So there's Hawking, there's Liberty. It's right here. That's where we need to go. Oh my god. All right. See you guys in a little bit. 
Got a new location. An infested area. How far away is this? Oh, that's a big-ass infested area. I'm not going in there. Let's check it out. <laughs> Let's just hop in. We can hop right back out and check it out. You know? Whoop! Okay. We checked it out, you know? And, uh... Well, it's been fun! But I will see you later. So it's on Hawking Lane, which is this street. It's one of these doors. Again, I wish I had an address. Oh, right here. You got business here. I serve the sea. I serve the sea. Anna sent me here to investigate the recent break-in. <sighs> I see be praised. Finally. I'm Daryl. Daryl Grimes. How can I help you? Tell me what happened you here. tell me what happened. And don't skimp on the details. Yeah, not much to tell, sadly. It was a man that much I know. He snuck in while I was upstairs. Tried to steal the fishies. But I heard him. The fishies. Nearly got him with a harpoon by Kay. But I missed in the dark. He got away, that Dane. But I wonder, why steal what you can get for free? Yeah, that's a bit of a puzzler. He's trying to expose them for what the fish are. They're poisoned fish. He what did burglar. this burglar look like? Same height as you. <laughs> not too big, not too small. Nothing to write home about. Average Joe. If not for his uh, bald head. Okay. That guy no was as bald as an egg. I could see the moonlight reflecting off the top of his head. He just keeps going and going and going. Real cue ball, that one. If you needed to draw a perfect circle, you could just trace the outline of his scalp. Did he steal something? What did he steal? Nothing. I scared him off before he could. Where'd he go? Where did he go after that? Don't know, pal. He was way faster than me. That's probably not saying a whole lot. Why all the secrecy? What's the deal with the, the password and such? Orders from the higher-ups. I don't get to ask why. But All right. Well, that's enough for now, Mr. Grimes. I've got to go to work. All right. Here, take the key. May the sea bless you. I hope it doesn't! See this eye. Now, this is an interesting symbol. This probably means EOD. Just a good inch of solid wood like it was nothing. It's a harpoon, dude. Yeah, they're they're meant to take down like whales and shit. The hall's fresh, still smells of the sea. No signs of decomposition at all. That is suspicious. The the fish are not rotting. Char Charlie will get there eventually. It just might take him a little while. Do we go downstairs first or upstairs? Let's go downstairs. Oh my god, do I really have to do this? I heard somebody else. Okay. Ooh! You gotta be kidding me, man. Oh my god, I missed. Oh my god. Gotta switch to the revolver. Now you guys, I can shovel. I can shovel you guys. Don't have to waste bullets on you. What? You okay? That was a weird sound. It sounded like I was supposed to discover something. Right here? This is a room they probably didn't want me to see or didn't think that I could see. And this is definitely a torture room. I have questions. <laughs> yeah! They killed someone here! Oh, he didn't get away. Dude. The guy who tried to steal the fish did not escape. 
Thing's dead as a doornail, but I don't see any wounds. So this thing's more like... This thing's more like some sort of crustacean with a cat skin on. Oh, That's gross. So first it ate the fish, and now it's dead. That's troubling. I mean, what'd I say? Poison fish, dude. Alright, heading upstairs. <sighs> Got anything good? Cartridges? Gimme. Cold springs, gunpowder, and shell casings. This guy must really be into his hobby to have such impressive tools. Interesting. Are those... Those look like brushes, but they're not... Oh, he whittles these, I guess. Nice work. When I was a kid, I would have gone nuts for this. Well, if it was finished, that is. Letter from the Orphanage. Dear Mr. Grimes, we can't thank you enough for what you do for the children. In these dark times, your toys go down like a tall glass of water. We all pray for your good health every day. We also kindly remind you that we still await your visit. All our staff and, of course, the children are eager to finally meet our benefactor in person. Poor Mr. Grimes. So please don't hesitate and come as soon as you are able with eternal gratitude. Administration of Oakmont Street, Jerome's Orphanage. Uh, Mr. Grimes, I don't think, has anything to do. Does he even know about the torture room? Well, actually, hmm. Maybe he's not so innocent, because the torture room is in the place where he's supposed to be working. I do feel bad for him, though, that he wills these boats for the kids, but then he knows he can't show his face there because of what their reaction will be to him. Hmm. 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 What's this? That's a fancy looking bottle. Looks like it was taken from a lab somewhere. There's some kind of powder left on the bottom. I better not touch it. It could be dangerous. A powder mixed in with the fish, huh? All right, this is open now. Come back, you thief. I'll show you not to mess with us. With us? This guy. Hmm. We can see kind of an outline of his face. I hope Professor Westerbrook never learns about this. Professor Westerbrook? How many professors does this town have? A bit more. Oh, no. Wait. So he was trying to... He was putting that chemical on the fish. Maybe it's some sort of antidote. Darn pests. Mayor, take them. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so he probably says that after he hears the sound. So I'm guessing this is what happened first. Professor Westerbrook never this happened second. More. Then he hears the noise. He thinks it's pests. And that's when he comes downstairs. Darn pests. Mayor, take them. And then he throws the harpoon right Come here. Back, you thief. I'll show you not to mess with us. And broke into the fish storage, poisoned the fish with an unknown substance, and made a noise which alerted the guard, who chased him out. Oh, are we, are we okay? You all right, Charlie? Why'd you lose sanity there? Okay, let's take a look at our mind palace. The lab flask. Mention of a professor, the poisoner in the university. The man who broke into the EOD fish storage is somehow connected to the university. I need to visit the university. That is interesting, though, because the cat crustacean did eat one of the fish and died. Which I assume isn't happening to everyone that's eating the fish. The fish is poisonous. EOD is giving away fish. The poisoned fish is spreading. Large quantities of possibly poisoned fish have already been distributed to the city's poor citizens. Okay, so... You dig up anything interesting? I sure did. Turns out our friend here wasn't here to rob the place. He came to poison the fish. By the sea. Are you sure? Well, that's what the evidence suggests, anyway. Okay. 
This is horrible. Please don't tell Anna it was my fault, or she'll have me courted. Anna will quarter you. You're joking about that, right? Wish I was. Anna, she's ruthless when it comes to punishing the guilty, EOD member or not. That's unexpected. Mm hmm. Huh? She's manipulative, man. Why do you think she kept calling you Charlie? Stroking your face and shit. I won't tell her. Don't worry. I won't tell her. You seem like a decent sort, Daryl. I'll, uh, I'll make something up. Thanks, Mr. Reed. Here's a little something to express my gratitude. Take care now. Still, I've done wrong and I deserve to be punished. I'll stay on guard duty for the next month without a day off. You have my word. All right, you, uh, you go ahead and do what you gotta do, I guess. Everyone's obvious duty, huh? Are we gonna bring this up? Bro, we got it. We gotta do it. I found a hidden room full of shackles and chains downstairs. Looks like some kind of torture chamber. Know anything about it? What? Stop talking, truck. That can't be true. I know this place top to bottom. Okay, so he's not he's not in on that. Now, Daryl, you know I'm a detective. And if you're lying, I'm going to find out one way or another. I've got nothing to do with it, I swear, Mr. Reed. Go ask Anna. She's responsible for renting the place. I know nothing about this. Okay. Yeah. I'll talk to Anna. We'll see if your story holds up. I believe him. Where's the university? Uh, can you remind me where I can find the Oakmont University? Where is it? You can't miss it. It's the greatest thing Oakmont has to offer, except maybe our famous caramelized eel stew. Give me your map. Oh, there thank you. you. Go. But don't forget to first report your findings to Anna. Bye. See ya. May the sea protect you. I'm sorry, Daryl. You're in a sticky situation, aren't you? All right, we need to check out this university. I mean, I guess we'll go back to Anna first. Oh, here it is. Oh, this entire region is Reed Heights. That's it's the biggest one then. Okay, that makes sense. This is the only region that we haven't been to yet. But uh, yeah, first we report back to Anna, I guess. All right, Anna. I've got news about your fish storage problem. Oh, I'm all ears, Charlie. It only looked like a robbery. Some guy broke into the storage to poison the fish. Near as I can tell, he succeeded, at least partially. I realize it's a lot to take on faith. Look, I've got a sample of what I think is the poison. Oh, I can't identify it yet. Wait, no, 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 don't do that. They protect us. That's terrible. Wh what kind of man would do such a thing, and why? I don't know, but I aim to find out. We need to stop distributing the fish. We have to let everyone know about Ooh. this. Kay knows how many people might already be affected. I don't know if I should have done this. Any idea who the poisoner is? Any theories on who might have done this? Any enemies? <laughs> the EOD has a lot of enemies. Wicked people that want to burn this city or drown it in blood. It could be anyone. It could be the police, the Ku Klux Klan, see, what? take them, or even the Throgmortons. We were always a thorn in the side of those apes. I'm sorry, the Ku Klux Klan exists in Oakmont? Huh. What do you want me to do with the poisoner once I find him? I'd bring an end to him right there if I were you. The police and court are useless these days. I'm gonna hear that him out. That wasn't the deal. I'm a detective, not a hitman. Fair enough. Fair enough. Report to me when you find him. I'll see that the reward will be more than handsome. If you know what I mean. I'll, uh, see what I can do. But we're a non -profit. One thing still bothers me. The guard at the storage, Daryl. What was he doing at the time? He sprang into action immediately. He fought like a lion. Your guard was vigilant. He fought bravely, but 
The poisoner knocked him out. You ask me? He deserves a raise. Good old dependable Daryl. I hope he's okay. I'll see he gets his due. Goodbye, Charlie. Why you gotta say it like that? I found a holding pen in the storage. I found what looks suspiciously like a dungeon in the basement of your fish storage. Care to explain? Excuse me? You found what? A dungeon. Chains, shackles, and blood. Ring any bells? Oh, I have no idea what you're talking about, but it sounds awful. We, we only started renting the place a few weeks ago. You are so suspicious. Oh, yes. I'm going to have to ask our landlord several uncomfortable questions, it seems. Thanks for the heads up, Charlie. Okay. I don't need you See to you tell later. me where the university is. I got my buddy Daryl to figure that out. Okay. Wait. I need to get out of here. Okay. Let's go to the university and look some stuff up. Okay. What is this? That is cool looking. Johnny tried to match himself against the current. Is this a tale of success or failure? Hmm. I don't like the way it was phrased. He tried. Did he fail? What are you doing over here? Oh, roasting a rat. Looks like fun. Okay. We're at Oakmont University, and I have no idea who to talk to. Um... Wow. They've been really skimping on the lawn care here at the university. I gotta say, this place looks like crap. Oh, uh, this is a learned man right here. Wendell sent you to deliver me the books, right? Um, no. You must have me confused with someone else. Oh, excuse me. I'm just worried for the fate of these tomes. Get some it's sleep, been a man. Week without news from Wendell, maybe you can help me. I'd reward you, of course. He's like a crack fiend, but for books! <laughs> Wendell said you'd send me the books. Uh, how you come to deliver the books? Not now! I'm preoccupied with other matters at the moment. Maybe I'll have time in the future. Oh, yes. Of course. Yeah, bye-bye! I need to find, uh... Wait a second. Hmm. Did you poison those fish? <laughs> the book. I look at the book title. I hadn't seen it before. How to poison fish. Educated, refined, sophisticated folk of Oakmont University. Now, uh, this is odd. It says I need to visit the university. Okay. Well, this place is huge. Maybe do I go in the main entrance here with the pillars and everything? Yeah. Department of Medicine. This sounds about right. Hi there. Hello, sir. Welcome to Oakmont University Department of Medicine. I'm Samuel. Uh, Charles Reed, private investigator. I have a few questions if you don't mind. The flask. You recognize this bottle? Maybe you could tell me what's inside. Hmm. That's one of our lab bottles. We have a lot of them. As for what's inside, I'd need to run some tests. Yeah, could you do that for me? These tests aren't cheap. And the other day I could get right to it, but we're, uh, somewhat hindered right now. What's up? Our lab is crawling with, well, creatures. Oh, Professor kill Westerbrook's em. research is a little unconventional, and something went wrong. Really wrong. I can solve that. So, if I do a little pest control for you, you'll run those tests for me. For free? Our budget is tight. You'd be helping the cause of science, Mr. Reed. Isn't that enough? Oh, I guess science could help itself. All right. Yes, you solve our problem, and I'll run the test for you. Off the books. Here's the key for the basement. Uh... The cause of science does not pay my rent, sir. Nice. Wait, what does it say? EOD is banned. 
To all staff and students of the University of Oakmont, henceforth any mention of the Everyone's Obvious Duty Organization, also known as EOD, its symbolics, current and or past members, as well as espousing their beliefs, is forbidden on university grounds on pain of dismissal and or expulsion. The administration has received numerous reports of EOD activity and outreach disguised as so-called charity work throughout our university and all over Oakmont. This dangerous activity has reached epidemic proportion and cannot be tolerated. Okay. Now that is interesting. And you have a pistol round just sitting on the desk. Alright. Hmm. Hang on real quick. Can he hop over? Oh my god. Hmm. Maybe I can just shovel him. Yeah. Barely even broke a sweat. That's it? The lab is clear. What? Oh, I'm glad this thing is dead. Why do they even keep it here? What the hell? What kind of person would even touch this? Not to mention dissect it. And more importantly, why isn't it dissolving into the floor? Experiment log, part one. March 2nd, I finally received a living specimen. Sadly, it's only the smallest one. The grunts call it Mr. Handsome, but I think it needs a proper name. March 3rd, I was thinking about the name for the specimen all night. I've begun a series of experiments on the creature. So far, it has proven exceptionally resistant to all the poisonous substances at my disposal, as well as acid and electrocution. Its shrieking, though, is bound to haunt me. March 5th, last night I had a vision, thousands of hands wrapped around me as a blanket, and I heard the name inside my head. Stygian Harvester. Hmm. Stygian's a good word. Okay, you need to get your sanity under control, my friend. Some serious equipment they've got here. Oakmont University is clearly well funded. Yeah, and they said they didn't have much money to give me, huh? I wonder what would happen if I press this button. Should I... Or shouldn't I? Probably not. So very tempting. I pressed it. Ah! Whoa! I was not expecting that! Dude. Oh no! He's got a weak spot, clearly. He is a mad boy. I missed him. I missed him. Okay, okay, reload the revolver. Frickin'. Alright, I need to craft some more of these. We don't have a whole lot left. I do have traps. Okay, I need to take my psychosomatics. Oop. Or whatever they're called. Okay, wait. Let's see. Let's put down a trap. Oh! Put down a trap. You step right over it. Mm. Did I get him? I got him! I got him! What the hell was that thing? That was a battle! That was a crazy battle! Experiment log part two, March 10th. With those pesky limitations removed, I can finally continue my experiments unhindered. I need to know more. The specimen remained alive even with half of its internal organs removed. It's fascinating. I'm on the verge of a breakthrough in biology as we know it. March 15th, I developed a way to reanimate their tissue, even in one that's been dead for weeks. This is monumental. The possibilities of it, the implications. Does this hint at something hidden? Some trait present inside other creatures, and perhaps even ourselves? I will need to find volunteers. This guy's sounding more and more unhinged. I don't like it. Mm-mm. Is he melting? He melted. Oops. Okay. Any more key- are these just brains? Unrefrigerated! Close the door! I thought, oh my god, I thought I smashed one. Did I? There was an awful lot of sound happening right there. Okay, uh, I think I've cleared the lab. 
you know, we always have an excuse. We could say, that thing was alive down there, so I killed it. Sounds about right. I've cleared the lab. Your lab is certified creature free. Excellent, Mr. Reed. You've done us a great favor. Now we can get things up and running again. So. Your lab was, uh, interesting. Running experiments on those creatures, what's up with that? Oh, they're fascinating, aren't they? Convincing evidence of new branches in the evolutionary tree. Can you blame us for taking an interest? Maybe not, but so much dead flesh down there, that's going to attract scavengers. Didn't you think about that? Uh, hmm. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> well, be more careful in the future. Your point's taken. Come on, your turn. Okay. I've done my part. Here's the bottle. Now you run those tests. Uh, yes. Wait here. It shouldn't take long. See that it doesn't. We finished that analysis, sir. <laughs> wow, it's, that was fast. <laughs> well, it's ricin. Ricin? Ricin? A highly toxic poison extracted from castor beans. I know what ricin is. It's slow-acting, but absolutely fatal to humans. Ah. How can you tell if someone's been poisoned with ricin? The symptoms take several days to develop. At first, it's like a common cold. But over several days, well, it develops into hemorrhage, internal organ failure, and death. It's not a pleasant way to die. Did you guys hear? There's somebody moving around in the building. So, where do you get ricin? This isn't something you can pick up from a drugstore. You can say that again, uh, Charlie. About that. It is rare, but we have a certain amount of it here. For study, in our hmm. poison store. Or we did. I'm afraid that must be where it came from. The label had been tampered with, but it certainly looks like ours. Where did you find it? Ah, crime scene. Someone was trying to poison a bunch of fish with it. This is horrible. I need to warn everyone in the university about this. Who has access? Who's got access to where the poison's stored? Only Professor Westerbrook has the key. His office is upstairs. But it wasn't right him. Right alongside Professor Cavendish's. It wasn't Professor Westerbrook. Professor Westerbrook's not here, though. He's been sick for the last few days. Professor Cavendish is away as well. On vacation. Hmm. Where do they live? I'm not sure, but probably somewhere in Advent. Most of the teaching staff live there. Wait. You don't think it was one of them? I'm working on that. Can you let me upstairs? I... well... Chop chop! Alright. This is serious. I'll help you. Here's the key. But please don't disturb the professor's things. Tell me about the professors. I'd like to know a bit more about your professors. What do you want to know? Uh, talk about Westerbrook first. I want first. to know more about Westerbrook. He's the head of our department. He's been here for, well, at least 30 years. He's one of the longest serving staff we have. As you've already seen, he's particularly interested in the wild beasts that recently appeared in our city. Yeah, that's quite the unique fauna you have there. I've no idea how he did it, but Mr. Throgmorton's men brought him live specimens for his research. He thinks he's on the verge of a breakthrough in evolutionary theory. A secret that once revealed, will benefit all humankind. Some secrets should stay buried. Six feet under. You're not a man of science, are you? It's not about why. It's about what if. Spare me the lecture. Tell me about Cavendish. Is he bald? What can you tell me about Professor Cavendish? He's one of the most brilliant teachers we have here. A PhD at only 25. Just imagine. He's not His bald. His biochemistry studies are second to none. Worthy of a Nobel Prize. If he could complete his work. What's his problem? I don't know. There's some kind of family trouble. It's made him standoffish and irritable, and easily distracted. I hope he gets through whatever he's going through. We need his talent, especially in these dark times. Bye. I'll see you later. Interesting. Okay, we got a lot of stuff. Got a lot of stuff to look at. Hmm. Whoa, I got a lot of stuff in there. 10 gunpowder, four shell casings. They were generous. Thank you. Okay, let's go upstairs. Check this place out. Clothes for maintenance. 
That's Westerbrook's office. I need to get in there, though. Hmm. I mean, let's just break in. Come on. It gave us a bunch of stuff just now, too, for that one. As much as I love these pistols, when am I gonna get, like, a real gun, you know? <laughs> Give me a shotgun. Or a rifle. Oh, oops. Wait, this is Westerbrook's desk? This is absurd! I've been five- it's been five months and they still haven't finished repairing my office. I'm done singing in the corridor like some kind of waiter. I won't step foot into this building again until the works are finished or you give me Cavendish's office. You tell that to the board. I'm through with this farce. Westerbrook sounds awful. Authorized personnel only. Hmm. Won't budge. I'm going in. These bottles look exactly the same as the one with the poison. Yeah, that's what he said. We already knew that. Hmm. Interesting. Where are we going? In here, huh? Hmm. This should be good enough to make a decent copy. It was Cavendish. Wow. So he put a key into some soap for the imprint. <laughs> Copying a key. Draft of an article. Brothers and sisters. Crossed out. Too familiar. My fellow Americans. Mm, they are Americans, too. <laughs> okay. Citizens of Oakmont. How much longer will we put up with those fish-faced bass? Crossed out. Those sea freaks? Crossed out. How much longer will we put up with this? Those K-forsaken degenerates who call themselves the EOD? Crossed out. Okay, so... Someone has some Innsmouther... Um... Prejudice, to say the least. That is very interesting. Let's put together our mind palace here. Uh, George Cavendish made a spare key. Westerbrook had access to the poison. George Cavendish is the poison thief. According to a student, he lives somewhere in Advent. I see. Okay. Okay, so we gotta look up. Cavendish's address Which I'm wondering where that would be actually all right I'm thinking we go to City Hall because I remember when I was looking up Randall's glassworks there was a Section for citizen records, so maybe we can find his address that way. We know that he lives in Advent So that'll narrow it down a little bit. I'm not sure what the third criteria I would need is maybe like Academe or <laughs> something like that no line again. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Registry. Okay, we're gonna look at citizen records. Advent. There we go. George Walter Cavendish. Date of birth, 1883. Okay. St. Michael's Road between Carpenter Street and Constitution Street, flat two. Civil status divorce. Interesting. All right, we know where he is. We're coming for you, Cavendish. Okay, so he lives, like, right here. Well, I'll just go ahead and head that way. See if we can catch him. I mean, is it this? This is it. The door won't He's budge. in flat two. Okay, that's not flat two. <laughs> Second floor, I guess. There's only two flats here. What is this? If you want it, take it. It's free. Oh. Knock on it first. Oh, All right, we're breaking in. Let's go, boys. I don't know who I'm talking to. Boys, I guess. Did I find something? The professor's factless. Westerbrook usually has his lunch about half past two. Get some soap. This is him trying to clone the key. Anna always stays at the fish market. She shouldn't learn about me. New hauls of fish arrive every two days. An ounce per box will be enough. The guard spends most of his time on the second floor during the night. Think about a way to divert suspicions from Westerbrook. Don't want him to come to any harm. Don't forget to return the flask to the storage. Think about plan B. I feel like there's some sort of honorable uh, motive here. But I can't think of what it could be. Going, going, gone. Body count rises as vanishings continue across Oakmont. Locals are in a panic. Most of the reported disappearances occurring in the shells, Salvation Harbor, and Grimhaven Bay. Ooh, bad parts of town. Gotta stay in Old Grove. 
Captain Caleb Lyons of the Oakmont Police has put out a call for information. Our evidence suggests a link between these disappearances and the charity organization EOD that has recently risen to prominence among the city's poor, said Lyons. Most of the victims seem to have either joined this group or been a recipient of their alms. We encourage anyone with information to come forward. The Chronicle reminds readers to avoid any suspicious newcomers, especially Innsmouthers, and to remain at home during evening hours. Stay alert. This Cavendish guy did an impressive investigation, and the EOD is in the center of all of it. My man, are you standing on a trash can right now? <laughs> How can I take you seriously? Disturbance in the shells as fighting brings out between locals and Innsmouthers. The cause of the conflict appears to be the disappearance of several women with locals accusing a group of Innsmouthers of, of the crime. The Oakmont police continue to investigate the vanishings, but as yet their case remains unsolved. One source from the shells reports that traces of fish scales and seaweed were found at multiple victims' homes, which seems to have precipitated the fight. Now that, that is interesting. Where you at, dude? Is he dead? I'm gonna just take your stuff real quick. Coil springs, metal scrap. <sighs> the door won't budge. I'll check that in a second, okay? And judging by the layer of dust on it, this ring hasn't been worn in a long time. So why keep it around? We did see his status was divorced. Maybe he has a tough time letting go. All right. The door won't budge. Okay, the picture is removed. So let's take a look with our mind's eye. I loved you. I always loved you. You don't think Anna, do you? I mean, he is he is 25 apparently. So, hmm. George I can't live like this anymore. That's her, I There's think. something I have to tell you. Is that her? I don't care what your damn EOD cult demands, Anna! It is! I thought the child was mine! Mine! <laughs> you will never understand our cause! My child is blessed by the sea! I'm leaving you, George! Okay. Let's see what we have here. Somebody got on with an Innsmouther. What was this one again? George, I can't okay. live like this anymore. That's when she told him. There's I don't care what your damn EOD call. You That's will it. never understand our cause. Pretty simple. My child is blessed by the sea. I'm leaving you, George. George Cavendish. He had a wife named Anna. She had a baby was not his, but blessed by the sea and claimed by the EOD. This caused their split. We all good? What happened? <laughs> What's going on? We fainted again. Smither ate the house with Charlie inside. Who, who are you? What, what are you doing here? Calm down. <laughs> He's composed Charles now. Reed. I'm a private investigator. Right now, you look like someone who's breaking into my house. A, a, a burglar. I, explain yourself. Easy there. Anna from the fish market asked me to find you. You know her. Right? I should have guessed. I know her much better than you think. No, I, I know. What does she want from me now? She already took everything I have. It's not about what she wants. It's about what you did. Poisoning the fish. Sound familiar? Yeah, I can prove you did it. Hold on. 
Before you jump to conclusions, I want you to know that I had a good reason to do what I did. It all comes back to Anna. Oh, this should be fun. What's your good reason for poisoning innocent people? You know the EOD are feeding the hungry, don't you? No. Oh, that's exactly the problem. They're not doing it out of charity. They do it to spread their influence and recruit new members. Some of those initiates, as they call them, vanish without a trace. And not just them. They kidnap ordinary folks, too. And poisoning the fish would prevent this how? It would kill them! Oh, you see, not everyone in this city believes in the EOD yet. They have opposition among the citizens, both rich and poor. A rumor of the EOD's fish being poisonous and several incidents would be enough to undermine the EOD by sparking fear and mistrust. Okay, that's not the right way to do it, though. There must be another way to deal with the EOD. Besides killing but people to eat their fish. If that obvious, why don't you just go to the police? <sighs> They're resourceful, those sons of hagfish. They maintain a squeaky clean image and K. They're good at it. I tried going to the police. They were no help at all. And I'm not suicidal enough to make it public and take them to court. Why do we need to ask who's Anna to you? It's his ex-wife, dude. Come on. Charlie, put two and two together for the umpteenth time. What's Anna got to do with all this? As you might have already gleaned, she is, was my wife. Uh-huh. Yeah, it all starts to come together now. Now? The EOD robbed me of her. It all started with the free fish. We were all short on food at the time. And then they hooked her with their nonsense about the benevolent sea and greater good. I looked past it for some time, but then... She became pregnant. Yes. At first, I was over the moon. But then one day she came to me, that snake, and told me that the child was not mine. She said it was blessed by the sea, that it was demanded by the EOD. Doom take them! I couldn't stand it! I just couldn't! What are you gonna do now? So what's your next move? I... was interrupted and couldn't finish my task. The EOD received a fresh haul of fish, but now they're on alert and raised their guard. I understand I'm in no position to ask, but after reviewing all the facts I've presented to you, Mr. Reed, would you agree to help me? Hang on. What did she mean, blessed by the sea? What do you think is the cause of Innsmouth Syndrome in people? Mm -hmm. uh, living in Innsmouth? That K-forsaken place has nothing to do with it. It comes from breeding with monsters. These sea creatures they call Deep Ones. They take our women and they spoil them with their seed. Then they give birth to degenerate fish-faced offspring. Where did you learn all of this? This information about the EOD? After Anna left, I had nothing. But I did have a lot of time to research Innsmouthers, the EOD, and the story behind them. It is an old and powerful organization. They appeared back in the mid-19th century in Innsmouth, and the first people with the Innsmouth Syndrome started showing up around that same time. Ah. Perhaps not coincidentally. No, uh, of course not. And the EOD is immensely rich. The sudden rise to power of the Blackwood family happened right after they joined them. Right, but now the Blackwoods are all gone because of the flood, so... Interesting. This is a tough one. I don't feel like I have enough information. I mean, this dude is poisoning people to make the EOD look bad. And so far, I haven't seen any evidence of the EOD doing something worse than mass poisoning. Here's the thing, I'm ultimately anti-EOD because I know better. But I don't think I wanna work with this guy and I feel like if I pretend to cooperate with the EOD, I can do more damage from the inside. So, let's fight. 
You're a madman, Cavendish. You're willing to let innocent people suffer and die just to get revenge on your ex-wife. No, this madness has to stop. And I'm gonna put an end to it right now. Oh, no, no. You, you don't understand. You tried to poison those fish! That was quick. I killed George Cavendish. Too bad the... <laughs> too bad the computer lagged out for like... The second... The split second that I killed him. Anyway, let's put together our mind palace. George sabotaged the EOD. Well, yeah, we knew that. Uh, a desperate savior. George Cavendish became desperate after EOD robbed him of his wife. He's determined to save others from the same fate. A dangerous psychopath who won't hesitate to kill innocents to achieve his goals. Ah, let's go with this one. Yeah. The EOD's operations are shady. We know that much. The EOD has much more going on than charity organizations. They're dirty, I know it. Whatever they're up to, it isn't good. A zealous servant of EOD. Anna Cavendish is a zealous servant of EOD and she will follow any instructions without hesitation. Okay. And then this conclusion, Anna Cavendish is covering up the EOD's shady ambition. I think we're gonna go with this. Everyone sucks. That's our, that's our conclusion here. Everyone sucks. Interesting. We'll go with this one. Oh. Wait, that's wrong. Yeah, we'll help Anna and the city. Yeah, sure. That's what we'll do. It made me go through that again before I could move on. George Cavendish is dead. I killed him. Now I must return to the fish market and speak with Anna about upholding her end of the bargain. Feel the gentle touch of tentacles? Okay, someone's been watching too much hentai in this city. Let's get out of here. I killed the poisoner. I found the poisoner and dealt with him. He won't be bothering you anymore. Oh, see, bless you, Charlie. That's great news. Who was it? Well, see, now that's the interesting part. It was your ex-husband, George Cavendish. Oh. Well, that son of a rotten shark finally got what was coming to him. Good riddance. Still, it's strange. I never thought he'd have the guts to do something like this. He was always a pushover. You're oddly calm. You're taking this remarkably well for a woman who just found out her ex-husband was a poisoner. He's nobody to me. The EOD is my family now. We serve a higher purpose than he could ever grasp. My life finally has meaning. You've done us both a huge favor by relieving him of the burden of his miserable existence. Well done, Charlie. Yeah, let me meet your boss. All right. That's why I did it no for No more messing around. Get me in touch with your Grand Poobah or whoever's in charge. <laughs> Grand Poobah. Now. Easy there, Charlie. I'm a woman of my word. Go to the basement of the fish market. It's nearby. You'll find an inn smather there by the name of Maurice. Tell him I've sent you. You'll get your answers. <sighs> About time. I'm not in the mood, newcomer. If you want to okay. talk, see ya. What? And it is only fair to be afraid. Titanic forces are at work, infinitely greater than ourselves, unknowable, incomprehensible. How do I get out of this conversation? There will be sacrifice. Keep walking, Charlie. There will be loss. Keep walking. There will be darkness. No. But these are the hallmarks of a pivotal moment in time, and each of us has a part to play. This seems a little grim. I guess this city wouldn't be complete without a doomsday prophet. Let me assure you, I am anything but. I am called Ebernote Blackwood. Oh, and this is the one place of the grand families. I have chosen to share my message. Please, come to one of my full sermons. What's with uh, your eyes? Charles Reed, good to meet you. See you then. I'll see you around. I gotta go to the basement, buddy. I don't have time to talk with you. 
Where's the basement of the fish market, actually? Oh, it's down here. Okay. Maurice! I have an appointment with you, Maurice. Maurice? Well, he's not here right now. I'll go ahead and just, uh, oh, actually. There we go. Give me that. Okay, got that first aid kit. So, like, wait. Hi! Oh! Are you, are you gonna attack me? Okay, hang on, they were, they were gonna kill me. I wasn't sure what that guy was doing at first. He was running, I didn't know if he was running away or what. What'd I get? Note to Maurice, kill him, A. Anna. Anna. Oh, this doesn't look suspicious at all. Hey, Anna! Surprise! Gonna take more than that to kill me! Alright, get back out there. Hey! You flirt with me and then- Hey, hey, Mr. Reed. Do I know you, buddy? Not yet, but I know you. I also know you're looking for a particular lady. My name's Fred. You're looking for a professor, though. Ain't that right? What? A scientist the order kidnapped. I think we can help each other. How do he you call mean? He calls you it the order. Slow down, buddy. Helping each other is not the same as let me just tell you everything. The order, please say it, say what it. What is this order you mentioned? Uh, yeah. You don't know, do you? EOD. It really stands for the Esoteric Order of Dagon. Dagon. Uh -huh. An old, old being from the depths of the sea. In books, they show him as a monstrous amphibian. The Innsmouthers worship him as a god. And of course, they make sacrifices to him. In blood. Alright, go on. Uh, nothing's for free in this city, is it? Figures. Alright. Shoot. You won't regret it. You've seen some of this city now, am I right? You've an inkling what's coming? I want out of the Order and the city before it hits. Trouble is, it's much easier to get into the Order than to leave. Give the slightest hint of it. You've signed your death warrant. I need somebody to get me out of the city on the quiet. And that's not an easy thing these days, my friend. <sighs> I've no idea how to help you with that. Ain't you a detective? There are people in the city, smugglers, who know what to do. Find them. That's how you can help. See. I've heard whispers about ads in the newspaper, a new ad every week, talking about Salvation Harbor. Maybe start there. <sighs> All right, fine. I'll look into it. But your lead on the professor had better be worth it. Seriously. I know where if they've got her. I can get you there. You just find me a way out fast, or I might be too dead to be any use to you. We wouldn't want that. All right, we finally got it back. Report to Mr. Throgmorton. And where did Anna go? Ran away with her tail tucked between her legs. Because I'm a badass. Robert, old pal. You won't believe... Who are the... Oh. This is a bad time, I'm guessing. Oh. Uh... I know who is behind Professor Doe's kidnapping. It's an organization called the Esoteric Order of Dagon. Most of them stick to the fish market, but they seem to have agents everywhere. Even the university. I knew there was something fishy about the EOD. Hey! The those filthy Innsmouthers. I'll tear it to the ground. EOD and Innsmouthers are not the same. Actually, most of the EOD members I met were locals. And for what it's worth, the only Innsmouther I spoke to was a nice guy. You ought to examine your prejudices. Are you calling me a bigot, Reed? Yes. But let's say it a little more softly. Robert, listen. Something needs to change. You holding a grudge against Innsmouthers ain't making anything better for anyone. Those who fan the flames of hatred 
always end up burnt in the end. They killed my son for Kay's sake! I know. But what did you do to prevent it? You made yourself their enemy instead of helping them. What did you expect would happen? You chose to brand them newcomers oh. and leave them to suffer just like you did with me. The only difference is that I'm useful to you. No wonder desperate in's mouthers would seek refuge okay. from a radical organization like the EOD. They had nowhere else to turn. I shall think about what you've said. Oh. Anyway. Right, back to business. I'll continue my search for Professor Dow. I have a promising lead. You have anything else to tell me? Your task remains the same. Find Harriet and bring her back. You say we are dealing with an entire organization? Well, I have something for you that might help our cause should things take a turn. Now leave. Shotgun? I've heard enough from you. I can understand that. Yes! I was kidding! I was kidding! It's... It is shotgun! It is shotgun! Oh! Oh, I just want to point it at something. Ooh. Guys, I'm going to go ham with this thing in the next video. All right, guys. Well, uh, that'll do it for this lengthy video of the Sinking City. Let me know what you guys are thinking about the series so far. I'm not sure when the next video will be. These take a long time to create because they're so long. Um, I mean, this video was about, it was about four hours of recording and another, I don't know, I've only edited half of it yet, but uh, I don't know, another three or four cutting it together and then it's about 15 hours total of work per video, so I can't exactly do these every day. I'll try to do it, uh, Sunday or Monday, probably Monday, unfortunately, but I mean, this is like... Four or five videos uh, from maybe some other channels. So I feel like I'm going at a good pace. But let me know what you think about the game so far. I, I have some problems with it, but overall I'm really enjoying it. If that wasn't obvious. I just like the atmosphere and the lore and the world and everything. I like being able to recognize some things. I know I don't recognize everything. I don't catch every reference, but I haven't read all of Lovecraft's work. And... The ones that I did read, I read a long time ago, so it's been a while. But it hasn't gotten in the way of my enjoyment of the game, not knowing everything about Lovecraft. So, uh, I've been having a great time. Hope you have been too. And I hope that I can keep doing the series because it's a lot of fun. I'll see you guys in the next video. Think critically.